In your study of physics, you may have heard someone tell you that the speed of light is a fundamental constant. Well, that's a lie. It's a lie that's been spread, starting with Einstein, and then many of his followers, especially those that specialize in relativity theory, whether it be special relativity or general relativity. And it's led to a lot of misconceptions about light and how light interacts with uh, frame transformations as it's related to relativity and general relativity. The truth of the matter is, as you can see here, speed of light is a function of the electric and magnetic constant, the permeability and permittivity of free space. And it's actually the permittivity that's the most fundamental, followed very quickly by the permeability. Epsilon followed by mu. Those are properties of space. Those are properties of the quantum field. And the speed of light is derived from that. Now, a lot of physicists would like to say, oh, C is more fundamental because they have one constant instead of two to worry about. But that's not actually how the physics of the quantum field works. Um, within the quantum field, um, we have an issue where there's dipoles. And that's the standard model of the quantum field and standard model quantum field theory that you have the particle pair model such as electron-positron pairs that have positive and negative pairs that form electric dipoles. And Casimir famously realized in 1948 that these dipoles can interact by van der Waals forces and the van der Waals forces can produce pressure. So what he realized is if you have two plates in space, that as the plates get closer, some longer wavelength fluctuations get eliminated. And as more and more get eliminated, the force pushing the plates apart gets smaller, while the, the force pushing the plates together remains the same. And it was found almost 50 years later that, that it's actually a measurable effect. Uh, at a, the distances of about a micron or slightly less, it starts to become measurable. And at even closer distances, it becomes significantly stronger. And so that proved the model. So now we know that yes, space does have electric charge dipole particle pairs in it in these vacuum fluctuations that make up the quantum field. And they interact by van der Waals forces. One thing a lot of people don't think about is that an additional van der Waals force is van der Waals torque. And torque happens because when electric charge wants to move, a dipole will rotate it will polarize with the electric charge and then rotate with it. And, but when that one dipole rotates, the other dipoles around it are being forced to rotate too because they're rotating in response. But it takes energy to make all these dipoles in space rotate uh, because they naturally want to stay, stay still. Um, so because it takes energy, that induces a torque back on the object that's trying to move. So the van der Waals torque of space is what regulates all the rotation of anything physical, whether it be electrically charged or electrically neutral. And we know that because the speed of light limit is the same for electrically neutral objects as it is for electrically charged objects. So it comes from the same source and the magnitude of the permittivity and permeability constant is the same whether you're talking about electrically neutral or electrically charged objects. So all of the speed of light and for everything is regulated by these quantum van der Waals torque. And the quantum van der Waals torque is what determines the permittivity and permeability. And we can think of permittivity in terms of the polarizability of space. If space were infinitely polarizable, then you would have an infinite capacity for charge, and, and permittivity is considered the capacitance of space. But it's limited by the van der Waals torque, and that limit is what sets the permittivity constant. And permeability, similarly, is related to magnetic charges. And magnetic charges happen rotating quantum dipoles, produce rotating 
produce quantum magnets uh, based on the direction of rotation. And so the quantum field is filled with these tiny little quantum magnets. And they also respond to magnetic fields. And so the magnetizability of space related to the permeability constant is also regulated by the quantum band of laws toward as it relates to magnetism. So when we think of it that way, it's the quantum van der Waals torque that's the most fundamental of, of constants, if you were to present them as constants, and then the permittivity and permeability, the electric and magnetic constant. And then after that, the speed of light is a tertiary constant. And so when you're dealing with relativistic effects, frame transformation, special relativity, general relativity, you really have to start with what's going on with the van der Waals torque and the permittivity and permeability of space and then figure out what's going on with the speed of light. Now interestingly, Einstein realized this sort of in the time frame from 1907 to 1911 because he published his first papers on general relativity where he considered the polarizability of space and considered that the speed of light was variable depending on the polarizability of space. Then afterward, uh, other physicists followed up on that. Uh, Wilson in, in 1921, and then um, Robert Dickey in the 1950s, and then a number of physicists have been working on it in the meantime. And, and I'm one of those physicists now, uh, at, when I came to realize that, yes, according to quantum field theory, you have to start with the permittivity and permeability of space. So, I can also mention the impedance of space, which is the, a function of the permeability over the permittivity and taking the square root, and which determines the ratio of the electric field strength to the magnetic field strength. And that ratio goes back to uh, the electric and magnetic field strength of the fields produced by the photon. So you can look at it that way. The photon produces these fields. These fields are regulated by the permittivity and permeability as a function of the impedance of space. And once again, we have a speed of light and the actual transmission of light being a function of the electric and magnetic constant that com comes out of the quantum field. So what does that tell us? Speed of light is an electromagnetic effect. It's not a geometric effect. And as I said, you have to go back and look at what the electric and magnetic constants are doing if you're going to understand what's going on with the speed of light whenever you're talking about relativistic effects, whether it be special relativity or general relativity. And I'll have other videos that follow up on this topic in more detail because there's a lot of nuances to it and a lot more information. Um, anyway, if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe. If you want to learn more about quantum field theory, then look for videos in the future. I try to do about one a week. And then I also have books you can see um, that give information about quantum field theory from research I've conducted over the last 30 years. And if you really want to support my research as an independent researcher, I have a Patreon account. So thank you for watching.